I did it. I hit a thousand subscribers in just over a month. This is wild. And I'm gonna share with you exactly what I did. So let's go. Today we are talking all about how to start and grow a YouTube channel from someone that in the last month, month and a half, I have grown from zero to a thousand subscribers. Happy dance for me. This was a major milestone for me. And I know that it's a major milestone for so many of us. I had planned on only reaching this in five, six months, but I was able to do it in just over one. So I wanna tell you what I did, my tips, my tricks, and encourage you to start. Because if I can do this, if I can grow to a thousand subs in just over a month, you can do this too. So let's jump into it. A lot of people are talking about how the YouTube wave is over, about how, how hard it is to grow. And it really hasn't been a struggle for me. It has been effortless. I feel like I found my home on YouTube. I feel like I'm finding my community on YouTube. So many of you have reached out to me on Insta and I've had the best chats ever. If you feel like you're called to do this too, go for it because I was petrified. I was petrified and I was sitting in limbo for over 10 years. I've been wanting to start a YouTube channel for over 10 years. It is ridiculous how long I've been wanting to do this. And I always was waiting for the perfect time. And I just woke up one morning and realized there is no perfect time. I've already wasted 10 years. I'm done wasting any more. So I changed that and you can too. And that's, I guess, where I want to start. The fact that it is not too late to start, whether that's on YouTube, whether that's on Instagram, whether that's on TikTok, whatever it might be, you have something unique to bring to the table and there's a reason that you feel called to do this. I personally believe that if you feel called to start a channel, if you feel called to start whatever you want to do, a business, go on a new career path, it's because that higher version of you, that best version of yourself, that future version of yourself has already done the thing and you know that it's a part of your path and that's why you'll fe you feel called to do it. So just go for it. I remember I showed up on here and I spoke to you guys about how I woke up one morning and thought about a specific TikTok. Now that TikTok was by Kerry Washington and she was speaking about a, a book that I was reading at the time. Great book, The Artist's Way. And in this book, they speak about how if you knew that a bus was going to come and pick you up and take you to your dream life, take you to your hottest, most successful version of yourself where all of your aspirations, all of your dreams, all of your goals ticked. It's your reality. Would you stroll to the bus or would you run? And I realized that I had been strolling to the bus. I had been walking, I'd been doing little circles, I'd been getting distracted and I decided I was going to run. And for me, that bus, that vehicle, that thing that I really felt called to do was YouTube. So I started running. Now, I did not go crazy in the sense of posting a YouTube video every single day. I kept it chill, but I posted with intention. And I think that that is what a lot of people forget. It's the fact that I would rather have quality over quantity and proof is in the results. So let's chat about exactly how you can do this too. If you're feeling called to start a YouTube channel, if you are feeling called to start running after your dreams, your dream life, the future best version of you, and that involves starting a YouTube channel, then this is the video for you. So I wanna start with the place that I think all of us sit in and the reason that a lot of us don't start. It's because we're starting from zero and we are scared to start from zero. We have no followers. We are scared of failing. But what I wanna remind you is that we all start from zero on every channel. And there'll be a new one, don't worry. There'll be a new one coming out where you will once again have to start from zero. But I think that fear of starting from zero is something that we don't wanna talk about if we truly think about it. It's not that we think nobody cares. It's not that we think we're not good enough. It's actually that our ego is more important to us than our dreams and aspirations. And I think that sometimes we let our ego take over. And I know I did. I played it safe. I stayed within the realm of Instagram because that's what worked for me. That's what where I had my community, where I knew how to post, where I didn't have to learn something new. And the first place that you're gonna have to start is getting over that and having some really deep, honest conversations with yourself about why you're scared to start, about why having no followers is so scary to you because I felt petrified at having zero followers. When I have 30,000 followers on Insta, I felt like I'm an authority, that I'm a leader, that I found my way. Starting from zero on an entirely new platform, it's hard. 
it's it's a challenge it's scary anything new is scary and as humans we naturally want to stay within our comfort zones but magic doesn't happen in your comfort zone your dream life doesn't happen in your comfort zone once i got over that and pushed my ego to the side that it's okay to have no followers if anything i did the opposite i shouted it to the rooftops i showed everybody on my instagram that i had no followers and this is what i'm doing and if you want to follow me, cool, come follow, but it's slow. I'm not a pro at it. I'm learning something new, but I'm challenging myself. I'm pushing myself because that is what the future version of me would have done. And once I got through the whole my ego being the real issue here, it was liberating. No one was watching, or at least I didn't think anybody was watching. And that allowed me to just speak about what I wanted to speak about. Not care about what my niche was, what I'm known for, what my history is, whether I'm being too personal, whether I'm being too vulnerable. I just went for it. I just showed up and loved the fact that at that point I had 20 followers, 50 followers, 100 followers. It's actually a gift. So I want you to think about it that way too. So now we're going to get into the real stuff. This is the strategy. This is the mindset. This is the real work that allowed me to step into this version of myself where I have a thousand subscribers and get to where I am now. And granted, this is just the beginning. I guarantee you in a year's time, I'm gonna be doing a 10K video or whatever it might be. This is video one and we will make it to 100,000 subscribers. I want that little plaque. It looks pretty damn cute. It'll look great on my wall in my office. Uh, <laughs> and I wanna to get to know more and more of you. People that I'm finding on YouTube, you guys are my soul sisters, honestly. I feel as though I have finally found my channel. I've tried Instagram, I've tried TikTok, I've tried Pinterest, I've tried it all. And it just felt hard. It felt like I was pushing shit up a hill, to be quite frank. YouTube's been effortless. So I wanna show, share with you what my mindset has been, how I've gone about it, and what I did to get to a thousand subscribers. So the first thing that I did is I changed my mindset about YouTube. I wasn't going to use YouTube as just a place where I take videos of my day, chuck it up, and hope for the best. No, I realize that when it comes to social media in general, it is the new TV. We used to go home, 7.30, watch our shows on the network channel, 7.30 was prime time, you know, at 7.30, 8.30, you sit down, you watch a show, and whatever they did, we did. Whatever they wore, we wore. On the, on the weekends, we would go out to the movies, watch the stars on the screens there, and afterwards be completely influenced by whatever those actors were wearing, doing, promoting, sponsoring, whatever it might be. But the times have changed. We are no longer watching TV the way that we used to. We are watching a little thing on our mobiles. We're watching our screens and they are completely tailored to us based on an algorithm, delivered content that we love, content that resonates with us, we can consume on the go. And something that really, really triggered me this week, having a bit of an existential crisis, was the moment that I realized that I don't see my friends and family posting on social media as often as I used to. Like, do you? And then I read an article from the Business Insider that spoke about how the only people that are posting consistently on social media are content creators and influences. Now, when you think about that, you think, oh yeah, that's really cool. I get it. But the reality of what I'm saying is that we are no longer using social media to connect with our friends and family. We're using social media as our media channel and we are watching content creators creators are the new TV stars. When I thought about that, it completely changed how I approached YouTube. I realized, okay, I'm going to create a series of episodes that are all aligned, that resonate with things that just genuinely interest me. I'm going to show up and I'm going to show up in a way that is competitive of those people that I admire, people that I want to be like, YouTubers that I want to be like. So I looked at what they were doing. I looked at their setup. I looked at the way that they edited. I took that inspiration and made it my own. I set up a similar vibe. I've just been doing the same thing on repeat because that is what a series is. It's something that is consistent, that you deliver in the same way. And for me, I really wanted to provide value, guidance, and the lessons that I was working through on my own, through my own internal work that I was doing, through my journaling, through just my findings and my stories about my life. So I decided, okay, cool, I'm gonna make my life a TV series and showed up in that way. And also committed to posting at least once per week. I tried with the, I tried to do twice a week, 
it didn't work. But here's a little secret that I did. I knew I was gonna only be able to do one video per week because I don't have a lot of video skills. I'm doing this all on my own. So I committed to one long form video per week. And in between, I went through my Instagram and I downloaded every single reel that, that I had, every reel that I had posted. And downloaded it and put it into my YouTube drafts. Every single day, I would make sure that I post at least one short and that really helped with subscribers. In the beginning, I got like 50 views, 20 views on my, my long form videos, but I would be getting like 500 views on my shorts, a thousand views on my shorts. So I realized, okay, there's an opportunity here to do both. I don't need to do any extra work. I just need to concentrate on YouTube. I'm not going to concentrate on Instagram for this month. I'm just gonna focus on one thing, one thing only and doing it properly. And that was my starting point. I wrote out a plan of the four videos that I was going to make and I did them. It's so complicated. Secondly, as a recovering yes girl, a major thing that I had to get over is not saying yes to everything. When I had friends that wanted me to go out more, wanted me to invest more time in them, I had to say no. And that was really hard for me, but I had realized that I was overexerting myself. And I think as women, we're told we can do it all. You can be a great partner, you can be a great sister, you can be a great daughter, you can be all of these things. You can be a great, like a, a boss babe. You can be everything that you want to be. And I agree that you can be all of those things, but I don't think you can do it all at once. I believe that we are only given three jugs in the main areas of our lives. The rest are all cups. Let me explain. There are so many different things that we need to juggle, especially as women. That could be your career, your business, it could be your family, it could be your friends, it most certainly is your relationship with yourself. And I think that we are expected to do it all and to do it all well. But the thing that generally sacrifices is us because we, we deprioritize ourselves. And I really had to learn to say no to other people and what they required of me or wanted of me. Saying no to them, that really was a deeper yes to me and for my goals and my dreams and my aspirations. Because every time that you betray yourself and say yes to something that you don't really want to do, something that you know you shouldn't be doing with your time because you have other things that you want to work on, it, it's you betraying yourself. A yes to them is actually a no to you and your greater purpose. So I really had to work on and was very stern with saying no to those that required more of me than I had to give so that I had enough energy, so that I had the capacity in order to do this, to choose me, to go after my dreams, to go after my aspirations in life. And it was hard, but I am so grateful for it. For me, I was trying to pursue career. I was trying to be the best wife that I can be, be the best puppy mom I can be, and be the best daughter I can be, and really prioritize my family and also my friendships. And that left me feeling drained. I was overwhelmed, I was tired, and I was exhausted because I had given my jugs to everyone else around me that I loved and everything around me that I loved, but I was left with a cup. As an introvert, as someone that really values her alone time, that needs a lot of alone time, I need a lot of self-care, I need uh, a lot of time for all of these thoughts, you know, ADHD, um, for all of these thoughts to work themselves out. And I realized, okay, I am going to push aside friends, put myself and me as a priority, as a jug, and choose my friendships to be cups. Now I told my friends this and majority of them are so accepting of it. And those that aren't truly shouldn't be there in any case. If you go to people that you love, people that you value, people that you put first and you say, hey, right now I'm at capacity. I'm juggling my career, my business. I am currently in the depths of family and I really need to prioritize myself and my goals in order to, to bring all of this together. If they turn around and say, that's actually not gonna cut it for me, I need more of a friend, I need more from you, then that's someone that isn't meant to be in your life. Then that person doesn't align with the best version of you. And that is a really tough pill to swallow because when you start choosing yourself, you will lose people along the way. But know that when you do lose those people, it's not a reflection on you as a person at all. 
It is a reflection on the fact that them being in your life wouldn't allow you the space to be the best version of you. And that is your number one priority because only when you are the best version of yourself are you able to give your all to your family, give your all to your career, give your all to your friends that are there. And these jugs can switch and change. Then friends will be more in the picture, you know? So I think that that is something that I really had to come to terms with and understand. It was, it was, it was tough, but I'm grateful that I chose me because I feel like my best self. Got all dressed up for you guys today. And I feel good. I feel aligned. I know I am becoming her. I am becoming the best version of myself. So choose you and don't be apologetic about it. You deserve to choose yourself and the right people will come along in the journey with you. They'll be patient. They'll love you. You'll know that they're meant to be in your life and that they align with that version of you. But in saying that, we also need to understand the harsh reality that sacrifice is the price of fulfillment. Now, that meant me saying no to walking with a lot of my girlfriends. I walk a lot. I walk about 15, 20,000 steps a day, but I realized that I really needed that time in the morning. So I have two walking sessions, a morning session and an, and an afternoon session. But I realized that my morning session needs to be reserved for me. It needs to be reserved for my thoughts, for my learnings, for me really getting into the mind of that future version of me. And when I went on those walks, that was my time. And when I started putting those boundaries, like some people, it didn't work with their schedule and that's totally fine. Either we found another time to connect, maybe on a weekend, maybe in the afternoon, at night, go to dinner. And for some people, it didn't work. I had to sacrifice in order to make the time. I had to say no to going to events or parties and going out, going to dinners, because I needed to fill my cup and make sure that I was prepping myself, working on myself and prioritizing me to show up and do something that I really felt called to do, which is show up for you guys. And I'm so grateful for that, but I think that we wanna have our cake and eat it too. And you can't. You need to decide what is more important. Are you rather going to use your weekends to escape your present and to drink, to forget about your problems, to, to go wild and just distract yourself with making sure that everyone else feels great? Or are you going to use your weekends to work on you, to work on your future goals, to work on that business, to work on that YouTube channel. Sacrifice is a part of this game. There's a reason that not everybody is a YouTuber. There's a reason that not everybody is a content creator. There's a reason that not everybody has financial freedom or just freedom in general. It's because not everybody is willing to sacrifice and that is the price that we have to pay. The next tip that I have is that if you want to be the moment, you need to show up like it. Okay, you need to act like it. So I wanted to be competing with other YouTubers that I admire, that I love, that I adore, and their video quality is amazing. They show up and speak about things in a specific order. I really dissected their strategy and the way that they would speak to their people. And I did that. I decided that I am going to show up as the future brand version of me, not as the version of me now. Now I can, she's cute, she's great, I love her, she doesn't like to wear makeup, she only wears makeup probably once a week, you know, she doesn't get too dolled up, she's an active way most of the time, glasses on, work mode, chill and vibes. And I love her, but for this, I knew that I needed to show up and wanted to show up in the capacity that I feel my best as the best version of myself would. So I'm showing up with my hair done. I'm showing up with my makeup done, wearing a cute new dress, you know? So you need to show up as that future version of yourself and you will become it and you will attract it. I got comments consistently like these on the screen. <laughs> It was cute little ego boost, like, oh, cute, you should have a million followers, or um, how are you not famous yet? But at the end of the day, I did that intentionally. I'm showing up as the version of me that would have a million followers. I'm showing up as the version of me that should be known for her YouTube channel. I'm showing up as the version of me that has a deep connection with her community and has incredible conversations offline on Insta or wherever else as well as here. That was intentional. I want a community and I want to be competing with the big accounts because I know that I'm destined to join them, but I need to act like them first. I can't just be recording shitty little videos, 
and be on the go, have no plan, no strategy, no intention behind what I'm doing and expect that to blow up. I'm not conceited enough to think that people care about what my day is, but what I do think people would care about is the lessons I've learned in my life so that they can learn from them too. What I do think that people would be interested is, is hearing about the learnings that I've had. I read a lot. I listen to a lot of podcasts, so I share a lot of references to the things that I'm learning and what I'm doing. My value is the way that I can communicate with people, the way that I can explain theories or philosophies and just ways of doing life that have really empowered me to be living my best life. I mean, I'm 32 and I finally feel as though I'm living like my true, authentic, best life. I know that there's so much more to do, but I know I'm on that path. And I felt as though people would want to hear it. And they did. So be intentional. And if you want to build a million dollar business through your YouTube channel, show up as that now. I went ahead and did a brand shoot so that I can start showing up on all of my social media channels instead of just YouTube. And I'm showing up as my million dollar brand now because I know that in the future, my business will be a million dollar business. I know that over the course of, I don't know how many years, but over the course of the next five years or so, I assume I'm going to make a million dollars. But that's not gonna happen if I'm sitting here just scatterbrain, no strategy, no intention behind all of this, and I just show up for you guys. You need to start with the end in mind, and you need to believe that you are the moment. You need to believe that you are that it girl, that that will be you. You are the next Alex Earl. You are the next whoever you dream of becoming, and start showing up as her now, because that is the only way you will ever become her. And something that really, really jumped out at me that I think is the last tip that I wanna share with you guys, is don't be afraid to be a beginner because the number of comments that I got saying that they love what I'm saying and that they, they love the content that I'm creating, but most importantly, what they love is that I'm a small channel, that I'm a small creator that is talking about this. People don't wanna learn from people that are already at the peak of the mountain. They wanna learn from people that are on the journey a few steps ahead of them. It is a superpower to be a beginner because you are able to connect with your people so much deeper than anyone else. You are able to be in the trenches, talk in real time like I am right now about how I just hit a thousand subscribers and to take people on the journey, share how you're doing it, to learn, to grow, to document through your channel and share. There's no point in starting a YouTube channel once you already have a million dollar business because yeah, that's aspirational, that's cool, that's motivating or whatever, but a lot of people are gonna watch you and think, yeah, cool, she can do it, but I can't. Oh yeah, cool, she's been doing this for, for how many years? She already has a million dollar business and that's why she's successful. So share the journey because that is what people really want from you. If you are a value creator, it is probably the most magical time to be able to show up and share the journey with your people because the connection that you create right now with your people is going to be so much stronger than once you do get to a million subscribers or build that million dollar business. But you need to act like that version of yourself now and don't be afraid to share the process. I screamed to the rooftops when I had 27 followers. I screamed to the rooftops when I had 50 followers. And you should too, because it is a benefit. It is an amazing gift that has been given to you. So lean in. Don't be shy. Don't be shameful. Don't let your ego take over. Lean in. Take ownership of the fact that you are a beginner. People will resonate with you so much more because of it. And remember, your success is inevitable. If you feel called to start your own channel, you are feeling called to do it for a reason. That future version of you, that best version of you, that hottest, most successful version of you has already done the thing. So listen to her. Stop trying to fight her. Stop strolling to the bus. Start running. Go after your dreams and go all in. For you, not for anyone else. For you, the right people will be by your side once you cross that finish line. Let me know what your goals are in the comments. I really, really wanna connect with you guys. I absolutely love this community over here in YouTube and I cannot wait to see you succeed and to help you on your journey to become her. And I'm so grateful for you to be here. If you are still here, 
make sure that you subscribe and check out my other videos too because I think that they'll they'll be valuable to you. I genuinely do. Oh, and Be The Moment is coming soon on October 4th, and I am so excited for this. This is all about how to really tap into your inner content creator and how to show up as the best version of yourself on social media, because I believe that social media is the most effective manifestation tool to create your dream life. So if you are interested in becoming a content creator, if you are interested in becoming the best version of yourself, building a brand, building a legacy, building a business, getting heaps of sponsorship deals, collaborations, even if you are a small account, make sure that you join the waitlist to be the moment. It is the place that you need to be. And we're going to be going through everything from branding, how to show up as that ultimate version of yourself as a content creator, setup, lighting, camera, editing, all of that jazz, because that's my expertise. And you'll be able to do it in, in four weeks, because who has time to waste? The year is not over yet, okay? Don't wait for 2024 in order to become the content creator of your dreams to start that YouTube channel. Do it now. So we're gonna be doing that on October 4th. I hope to see you there. So much love to you and yeah, bye.